Well, hello, and welcome back to GetChemistryHelp.com. This is Dr. Kent, and I'm going to give you a quick lesson on unit conversions, or what's more formally called unit analysis or dimensional analysis. Now, now you've been doing unit conversions all your life. I'm sure on a regular basis you convert feet into inches, or hours into minutes, or days into hours, or things like that. But I want to show you a more formalized, kind of a stepwise method that will really help you out as you get into more complex unit conversions. So first off, we got to know what is a conversion factor. Well, conversion factor is just a ratio that specifies how one unit of measurement relates to another unit of measurement. And again, I'm sure you already know lots of these. For example, you probably know one minute equals 60 seconds. Or you probably know one foot equals 12 inches. One hour equals 60 minutes. One day equals 24 hours. Maybe you know one gallon equals four quarts. So there's lots of these conversion factors. But as we said, these are ratios. So for one minute equals 60 seconds, I could write that as the ratio one minute per 60 seconds. But it's also true that I could flip it and say there's 60 seconds per one minute. And that's true for any conversion factor because conversion factors always come in pairs. So example, I could say one foot per 12 inches, or I could say 12 inches per one foot. Now the method again that we're going to use to convert between units is called the unit analysis method. And it's just a stepwise process, and it basically has three different steps that I want to show you. And the best way to probably show you the three steps is just to use a real simple example. So let's go through this problem solving method. So our simple example is how many seconds are in 3.55 minutes. So step one just says, okay, identify the known quantity and identify the units of the new quantity. Okay, so what's the known quantity? Well, the one I know are 3.55 minutes. So I'm gonna write down what I know. I know 3.55 minutes. And what do I want to know? What are the units of the new quantity I'm trying to find? Well, again, I'm trying to find seconds. So I'm gonna put seconds over here. So I'm trying to get from minutes into seconds. Okay, step two says, multiply this given quantity by a conversion factor, could be one, could be more, so that the units cancel and leave you with the units you desire. Okay, so we just said that one minute equals 60 seconds. <coughs> okay, so I need to set that up so that the units will cancel. I can get rid of minutes and put it into seconds. Okay, that conversion could be written one of two ways as a ratio. I could write it one minute per 60 seconds, or I could write it 60 seconds per one minute. Well, if that factor has to go in here as a ratio, if I want minutes to cancel and leave me with seconds, which way will it have to be? will have to be the way on the left or the way on the right. Okay, well, if I want minutes to cancel, minutes will have to be on the bottom. So it's going to have to be this variation right here. So it's going to have to be 60 seconds on top, one minute on the bottom. And now you can see minutes will cancel. If I had used this conversion factor, I would have had minutes times minutes divided by seconds. I would have got some crazy unit like minutes squared per seconds. So since I was starting with units of minutes on top, I had to have those same units on the bottom of the conversion factor. Okay, so step three says, now that I've got it set up, I just want to go ahead and punch in your calculator and perform whatever operations are indicated. So in my case, it's 3.55 times 60 divided by one. So I put that on my calculator and I got 213 seconds. So there you go. So I just converted 3.55 minutes into 213 seconds. So one unit to another. Now the question comes though, how about the significant digits in that conversion? Well, there are a few different cases. If I'm converting English system units to English system units, then those are always exact conversions. Or if I'm converting from the metric system units to other metric system units, those are exact. So these have all been defined. So for example, one foot and 12 inches, those are both from the English system. So that's been defined. 
So one foot has not been measured to be about 12 inches. No, it's been defined to be exactly 12 inches. And one yard has been defined to be exactly three feet. And one gallon has been defined to be exactly four quarts. So English to English, those are always exact. So these do not have significant figures because they're not measurements. So that's not two significant figures. That's not one significant figure. No, these are exact. The same thing from metric to metric. One kilometer has been defined to be 10 to the third meters. One centigram has been defined to be 10 to the negative second grams. One gigaliter has been defined to be 10 to the ninth liters. So again, these are all exact. So if you go from English to English, so if you stay within the English system, you don't have to worry about the significant figures. If you stay within the metric system, you don't have to worry about the significant figures. But if you want to convert between English and metric, that's where we have to consider significant figures. So English to metric conversions are inexact. So these have been measured. They're not defined. Okay, they're not defined. So since they're measured, we know measurements are when significant digits apply. So for example, converting pounds, this is English system, into grams. This is the metric system. Well, well, someone had to sit down and they had to measure how many grams were in a pound. So they had to measure this. So this would have three significant figures. So if I use this conversion, then I would limit myself to three significant figures. How about quarts? Quarts are English into liters. Liters are metric. So English to metric, somebody has to measure how many liters are in a quart. So this would have four significant figures. So if I use this in a calculation, I'm limited to four significant figures. Now, however, there is one English to metric conversion that is exact. Basically, back in 1958, scientists sat down and decided to have one conversion between the two systems that was exact. And that is one inch is defined as exactly 2.54 centimeters. Now, it doesn't appear very exact because it has this decimal, but it is in fact exact. So this is not three significant figures. So this is exact, just the same way 12 inches equals one foot is exact. Okay, well, let's try a couple of examples and see if we can clarify this. So the first example says, how many yards are in 2.7 miles? Okay, so what do I know? I know 2.7 miles. Let's abbreviate that MI. And what do I want to know? Well, my desired units are yards. So I'm trying to get to yards down here. So let's go ahead and just put yards down here. Okay, well, I need a conversion factor that starts with miles and gets me to yards. Well, there's two that were given here to me. There's one that has miles going to feet, one that has yards going to feet, but there's not one that goes directly from miles to yards. So I'm gonna have to use a couple of conversion factors. Well, which one do I use first? Do I use yards and feet or miles and feet? Well, it depends what I'm starting with. I'm starting with miles, so I need a conversion factor that will cancel out miles. So I need to start with this conversion factor. Okay, so one mile equals 5280 feet. So will one mile go on top or bottom? Well, if miles are canceling, I have to put miles on the bottom. So one mile would go down here, which means the other half of the conversion factor 50 to 80 feet would go on top. Okay, now I've canceled miles. The next one, now I have to get rid of feet and I have to turn feet into yards. So one yard has been defined to be exactly three feet. Well, same question, which one has to go on the bottom? Well, if I want feet to cancel, I have to put it on the bottom. So three feet would go down here and one yard would go on top. So now feet cancels, and I'm left with yards. So you take this and you punch it in your calculator. And remember, this says 2.7 miles times 5280 feet. But the 3 feet is on the bottom, so you have to divide by 3 feet. So 2.7 times 5280 divided by 3. And I got 4,752 yards put move yards over here so okay so now let's look at our significant figures so this first number this one has two significant figures how about this number 5280 
Well, is this English to English, metric to metric, or English to metric? Well, miles and feet are both English. So this has been defined. One mile has been defined to be exactly 5,280 feet. So that is exact. So we don't consider any significant digits in that. How about three feet and one yard? Is this, is this one significant figure? Well, no, again, feet and yards are both English. One yard has been defined to be exactly three feet. So that's exact. So we've got basically two significant figures. This is exact, this is exact, so the only one that matters is two, so our answer can only have the fewest, which is two significant figures. So I would round that off, the five would tell me to round that up, and I could either write that as 4,800, or probably the better way would be to write it 4.8 times 10 to the third yards. Okay, let's try one more. How many KL? Now this is kiloliters. So if you haven't watched the video yet on the metric system, you might want to hop over and watch that video, then come back. But how many kiloliters are in 3.190 times 10 to the fifth gallons? Okay, so what do I know? Well, I know 3.190 times 10 to the fifth gallons. What are my desired units? Well, kiloliters. So I'm trying to get to kiloliters. Okay. So, I'm starting off with gallons. That means I need a conversion factor that has gallons in it. And since I'm starting with gallons, I know gallons is going to have to go on the bottom for it to cancel. So let's see what we know. We know one liter is approximately 0.264 gallons. Okay, so 0.264 gallons would go on the bottom, which means the other part of the ratio or the factor would go on top. Good. Now we got rid of gallons. Now I need to go from liters. I'm trying to get that into kiloliters. So liters is going to have to go on the bottom to cancel. So we look here. This part has the liters in it, so that will go on the bottom. And the other half of the factor will go on the top. So liters cancels. And now we, and now we punch this on our calculator. So it's going to be 3.190 times 10 to the fifth. Then we have to divide by whatever's on bottom. So divide that by 0.264 and then divide that by 10 to the third. And I put that in my calculator and I got 1208.33 repeating. Okay, how about our significant figures? Well, this was a measurement. So this has four significant figures. How about this one? Is this three significant figures or is this exact? Well, liters, remember these is metric. Gallons, those are English. So English to metric, somebody had to measure that. So this does have significant figures. So this would have three significant figures. How about this one? Kiloliters to liters. Well, kiloliters and liters are both metric, so this one would be exact. Okay, well, same with any kind of multiplication. Four sig figs times three sig figs times exact, which is basically infinite sig figs. What's the fewest? Well, the fewest would be three. So our answer could only have three significant figures. So eight would tell me to round off. And probably the best way to write that would be 1.21 times 10 to the third kiloliters. So that again has three significant figures. Well, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on unit analysis. For much more practice problems, come and visit me at getchemistryhelp.com and be sure and click down below on the subscribe button so you'll be notified as soon as new video lessons are posted. And we'll see you next time. Thank you.